Welcome to Electron Online, and here's the fourth example of a thermodynamic cycle. In this case, we're going to include an adiabatic process in our cycle. Again, notice this is a complete cycle. We start at 1, go to 2, go to 3, back to 1. So we end up back in the same state that we started with, and typically the cycle goes over and over and over again. This is again kind of a theoretical cycle. This is not something you would typically find in any kind of machinery or engine or anything like that. In the future, in some videos coming up in uh, maybe another 10 or 20 videos from now, uh, we'll go over some real cycles, some real engine cycles, diesel cycles, carnal cycles, uh, auto cycles, so forth, and there we'll see what a real cycle looks like. But here, this is simply as an exercise to figure out how to find the work done in some thermodynamic cycle, and this one includes an adiabatic process. So what we would say then in this case is that the work done is simply going to be equal to the work done going from 1 to 2, plus the work done going from 2 to 3, plus the work done going from 3 back to its original state 1. And you can see that it's not that difficult to find it for 1 to 2 because that's an isovolumetric process. The answer there is that's simply equal to 0, plus the work done by this adiabatic process, and we'll get to that in just a moment, plus the work done going from 3 to 1, which is again pressure times a change in the volume because that's an isobaric process. So how do we find the work done going from 2 to 3, which is an adiabatic process? Well, let's go back to our first law of thermodynamics that says delta U equals Q minus W, the change in internal energy of the gas equals the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. And remember, for a thermodynamic process, oh, no, nope, not thermodynamic, for an adiabatic process, that's what I'm looking for, Q is equal to zero. So in this case, we get delta U equals zero minus W, or that means that W is equal to minus delta U. And then if you remember what the change in internal energy equation is, then you can say that the work done in an adiabatic process is equal to minus NC sub V delta T. So all we have to do there is find the change in the temperature, know what the C sub V is for our gas, and we know that we have a monatomic gas, N is just the number of moles, and we're in business. We can plug that right in here. So what we're looking for is plus the minus N C sub V delta T going from 2 to 3. All right. So what's the temperature? Well, first of all, we're given the temperature over here at point 1, but we're not given the temperature at 2, and we're not given the temperature at 3. Hmm. So what do we need to do then? Well, we need to find the temperature at 2. So using this equation right here, we say temperature is equal to PV over NR simply by dividing both sides by NR. So temperature at 2 is equal to uh, the pressure at 2, which is 2 atmospheres. Oh, there should have been 2 atmospheres. So that would be 2 atmospheres, so 2 times 101,300 pascals times the volume. At the volume at that point is 20 liters or 0 0.020 meters cubed. And divide the whole thing by the number of moles and 8.31, that's a joules per mole times Kelvin. So temperature at that point is, and let's see here. So we go 2 times 101, 300 uh, times 0 0.02 divided by 8.31 equals, and the temperature at the location is 400. And 87.6 Kelvin. All right, that's a good start. So now we have one of the two temperatures. Now we need to know the temperature at three. Now, since it's not an isothermic process, the temperature at three is not going to be the same as the temperature at two. So, how do we find that for an adiabatic process? Ah, we have this equation that says that uh, T2 times volume 2 to the gamma minus 1 equals T3 times volume 3 to the gamma minus 1. So in an adiabatic process, the temperature at 3 can be found if you know the temperature 2 and we know the volume change. But there's another problem. Hmm, we don't know the volume at 3. There we need another equation. Maybe we'll try this one that says that uh, P2 V2 to the gamma equals P3 V3 to the gamma. So there we have a relation between pressure and volume for an adiabatic process, and it turns out that, yes, we do know the pressure too, 
And we do know the pressure at 3, which is the same as pressure at 1. We do know the volume at 2. So actually, here we can find the volume at 3. And once we find the volume at 3, we can find the temperature at 3. Hmm, not so straightforward, is it? But it's the only way. All right, so what we're going to do here is find the volume at 3 first. So we can say that the volume at 3 to the gamma is equal to pressure 2, volume 2 to the gamma, divided by pressure 3, simply dividing both sides by pressure 3 and turn the equation around. And then to find the volume at 3, I need to take the gamma root of both sides of the equation. So volume 3 equals the gamma root of P2, V2 to the gamma over P3. All right, it doesn't look like a nice equation, but actually it's not so bad. First of all, what is the gamma of a monatomic gas? Well, remember that gamma is the ratio of the uh, C sub P divided by C sub V. And for a monatomic gas, that's 5 over 2R divided by 3 over 2R. And so the R's cancel out, the 2's cancel out, which is 5 over 3, which is 1.67. All right, so now that we know that, we say this is equal to the 1.67 root times pressure at 2, which is 2 atmospheres, which is uh, uh, 2 times 101,300 pascals. I'm going to leave all the units out because it's going to get kind of messy. Uh, volume at 2 is uh, 20 liters, converted to cubic meters is 0 0.020. There's a decimal. Uh, that would be to the 1.67 power divided by pressure at 3, which is 1 atmosphere, which is 101,300. Okay, notice then that this cancels out with that, so that makes it a little bit easier. So we take this number, raised to 1.67 power, times 2, take the, the 1.67 root of that, and uh, so 0 0.02 raised to the 1.67 power equals times 2 equals. Now we're going to have to raise that, raise that to the 1 divided by 1.67 power equals, ah, that's better. So volume 3 is equal to 0 0.0303 cubic meters. So now we have the new volume at this location, which means we now can use this equation, because this volume We'll go in here to solve for T sub 3. All right, so T sub 3 is equal to T sub 2 V uh, sub 2 to the gamma minus 1 divided by V sub 3 to the gamma minus 1. So it's simply the ratio of those two volumes to the gamma minus 1 power. So T sub 3 is equal to T sub 2 times the ratio of V2 over V3 to the gamma minus 1, and let's plug in the numbers. T sub 2 was, we found it somewhere right here, T sub 2 was 487.6, 487.6 Kelvin, times the ratio of those two uh, volumes, V2 was 20 liters, and V3 was 30.3 liters, and raised to the gamma minus 1 power, remember gamma, was 1.67 minus 1 would be to the 0 0.67 power. All right, so now that should give us T3. So let's see here, uh, 1 over that. There we go. And uh, times 0 0.02 equals, so that's the ratio, raised to the 0.67 power and then multiply times 487.6 times 487.6 equals, and I get 369.2 degrees, 369.2 Kelvin. Now, a quick check, is that reasonable? Well, let's see here. In adiabatic process, the temperature of the gas actually decreases because we cross isotherms and we go to a lower temperature. And if the temperature here was 487.6, we expect the temperature there to be less than 487.6, it was 369.2, so it looks like we're in the ballpark. All right, now, are we ready to find the work done by that process? I think we are, because now we have the difference in the temperature. We have the beginning and ending temperature. We have C sub P, we have N. We're in business, so this is equal to zero plus. Uh, this is actually a minus, so let me go ahead and minus N. N would be one mole, 
C sub V. C sub V for a monatomic uh, process would be 3 halves R. So 3 over 2 R. R is 8.31. And um, delta T. Now, this is going to be a negative quantity because the final temperature is lower than initial temperature. So it's 369.2 Kelvin minus 487.6 Kelvin. And, oop, we got to be careful here. And then, of course, plus the P delta V. I'll put the numbers in later because I'm running out of room there. But at least we can calculate this portion right here now. Let's do that. So we have uh, 487.6 minus 369.2, and that's negative, times 1.5, and times 8.31. And so this is equal to uh, 0 minus, minus, that's plus 1,476 joules. So this part of the process, the gas does 1,476 joules of work. Now we have to subtract this because this is going to be negative work because it's to the left. So it's minus. That's going to be, uh, actually, let me add it. The pressure is because the sign will come out automatically. This is Pascal's times the change in the volume. So the final volume is 20 liters, 0 0.020 cubic meters, minus the initial volume of 0 0.0303 cubic meters. So let's find out what that is equal to. So this is equal to 1,476 joules, and that will be a minus, all right, 0 0.02 um, minus 0 0.0303 uh, times 101,300 equals, and that would be minus 1,043 joules. And so final answer, 1,476 minus 1,043 and that's 433 joules of total work done by this cycle, this thermodynamic cycle. So the way it works is this, going from one to two, no work done because no change in volume. Going from two to three, the gas does work, a total of 1476 joules of work, and then going back from three to, to one, the atmosphere has to work on the gas, so work is done on the gas, that means negative work, 1043 joules, Net work done by this thermodynamic cycle is 433 joules, and that's how you do a problem like that.